Kevin. We welcome this morning Pastor Kevin uh, Mohammed, uh, who is a pastor currently in the Northeastern Conference for the last four years. Uh, but prior to serving in the Northeastern Conference, he served for 22 years as a pastor uh, in the South Caribbean Conference in Trinidad, his native land. Uh, he is here with us today from the Agape Seventh-day Adventist Church in Richmond Hill, Queens. Uh, in addition to his responsibilities as pastor of the Agape Church, uh, he is also uh, responsible for cross-cultural mission in the Northeastern Conference. His passion is for prayer and mission, and we welcome you, Pastor. Thank you for accepting the call uh, to share with us this morning in the morning manner. We welcome you uh, to the table. We turn the time over to you. Share with us what God has laid upon your mind again. Uh, help me welcome Pastor Kevin uh, Mohammed with us this morning. Welcome, my Pastor. Good morning. Thank you so much, Pastor Nilan Samuel and uh, everyone who is on this platform this morning, uh, Morning Manor, we praise God for this initiative, this prayer platform that has been a great blessing to many. And thank you, Pastor Samuel, for the invitation to join you all this morning. It's my first time coming on this program. I've been on others before, and I'm happy to join with you all here. I've listened to the prayer um, intercessors plead on behalf of others, very touching. Listen to the music, I've listened to the testimonies and they're indeed very encouraging. It says something great is happening on this platform. May God continue to bless your leadership and those who work with you, your team um, that hearts will continue to be blessed. Now, uh, for the next few minutes, I'd like to share on the topic, seeing this is morning manner, and it's about prayer, and it's also about uh, feeding on God's word. I'd like to share on prayer itself, the topic of prayer, but in, in relation to prayer and Jesus, that is praying like Jesus. Praying like Jesus. I want us to bow our heads right now as we pray. Loving Father, we thank you for who you are. We pray that thy Holy Spirit will be with us even now as we go into thy word. Let thy name be glorified. Let thy name be lifted up. Let hearts be touched and delivered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praying like Jesus. Now, the Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 2, looking unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. I believe, sisters and brothers, and you would believe with me too, that Jesus is our best example. If you believe that, you could put a thumbs up. Hey, Jesus is our best example. And uh, if he is our best example in everything, we appreciate the fact that he is also our best example when it comes to prayer. Would you say amen? Yes. When it comes to praying, I believe that there's no better person to look to in understanding prayer and modeling prayer like Jesus himself. Now, there are several principles we could learn about prayer when we look at the life of Jesus Christ. And I want to share some of these principles with you this morning. And the first one is this. Jesus prayed regularly before daylight and in a solitary place. And I see that you all are following that example. In fact, Jesus got up, the Bible says, a while before daylight, and he met with the Father, and he prayed. Mark 1 35 says, and in the morning, rising up early, a great while before day, he went out and departed in a solitary place, and there he prayed. Luke 5 16 said, yet he frequently withdrew to the wilderness to pray. And uh, Jesus did this as a habit. And if we are followers of Jesus, this is what we ought to do as well, my dear sisters and brothers. And it's good to see that you all are meeting on mornings for morning manner, following the example of Jesus. Secondly, 
Jesus prayed for things privately before he encountered it publicly. And I want us to understand this point, my friends. This came home really um, this really serious to me because when we look at the story of Lazarus, when Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, John 11 and verse 42 said, and, and, and I knew Jesus is speaking here. He says, and I knew that thou hearest me always, but because of the people which stand by, I said it that they may believe that thou hast sent me. So, so Jesus been communicating with the father all along when he knew that he was going to Lazarus's house. We, we know the story very well. He delayed for two days and he allowed Lazarus to fall sick so that he could perform a bigger miracle. And so on his way, he would have been talking to the father before he reached the situation. So when when he got there, he was he was able to pray just so that the people could hear that he's communicating with the father. But he and the father already had an agreement that God was going to raise Lazarus from the dead. Oh, I trust God that, 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 that you will have the same experience in your prayer life. That when you are going to pray for someone, you don't wait till when you reach at the point then to begin to pray. But you would have been offering up their situation to God way before and God would have already given you an answer. So when you go to pray for them now, you pray a prayer of victory because you know God had already heard your prayer. Man, that is connection that the Lord wants to give to us this morning. Another point about Jesus' prayer life was that he prayed persistently. How did he pray? I say he prayed persistently. Jesus just didn't pray once and give up, but he showed us that we need to pray persistently. You remember that man, according to Mark chapter 8, he met this man at Bethsaida, and, uh, and, and, and the man was blind, and he begged Jesus to touch him. The Bible said that he took the blind man by hand and led him out of the town. And when he he he, he spat um, on his eyes, or he spat and put it on his eyes, uh, uh, he, 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 he asked the man, you know, what do you see? You know, the man wasn't seeing good at first. The man said, I saw men like trees walking. Hey, Jesus realized that he touched him, but he wasn't healed yet. Did Jesus leave him as he was? Did Jesus stop praying? No. The Bible says that Jesus touched him a second time. In other words, Jesus prayed a second time. And this time he asked him, what do you see? And the Bible says that his sight was restored, that he saw everyone clearly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's the prayer experience that the Lord wants you to have. But sometimes we give up too soon. Hey, we need to pray over a matter. We need to pray for someone and pray and pray and pray until we see God's mighty hand move and that person is delivered. God is calling us to pray persistent prayer. Sisters and brothers, don't give up. I remember um, there was this uh, woman who called me on the phone one day, uh, and uh, I believed that God was going to do something great in her life. You know, we were giving her Bible studies, leading her to the Lord. She wasn't a believer in Jesus just yet in terms of being baptized, but she heard about the Lord. She was receiving studies and so she called me on the phone and i'm giving you this example because this is a zoom platform and we live in different places and sometimes you can't meet a person to pray with them in person but i believe that the same god of power who could answer answer prayer in person he could answer prayer over the phone as well and even through the zoom platform so when she called me she told me she was feeling ill and 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 uh, this feeling was so overwhelming, and and in her body, even outwardly, there was a rash all over her body. 
and as she was she was becoming fearful that something bad was happening within her system she had been to the doctor and they had given her some medication to use but it wasn't working but in counsel with her it's always good to talk with someone before you pray with them and i picked up that this was not just a physical problem but this was a, a spiritual affliction of the enemy upon her life so i asked her a few questions and she answered me and and it and it, and it related that the fact that the enemy had attacked her life through someone in the neighborhood that had done her wrong and and and, and i said sister do you believe in jesus and she said yes i said i'm gonna pray for you now that the lord will deliver you from this affliction i prayed and i asked god for the victory to I spoke to her um, uh, the, the, the next day uh, and uh, on the phone and, and, and she said, Pastor, it's the same way. It didn't go away. I said, Sister, well, we need to pray again. I, I, I prayed, brought her before the Lord. The next day she called me. She said, Pastor, all the symptoms have gone away. She rejoiced in Jesus because the Lord touched her and healed her and delivered her from that satanic affliction upon her life. Hey, my friends, we need to pray persistently. We need to follow the example of Jesus as well and pray compassion compassionately. Oh, I've got a word for our prayer intercessors this morning. If compassion doesn't reach your heart, you are not ready to pray as yet. Hey, you know, in, 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 in Matthew chapter 14 and verse 14 says, Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and he was moved with compassion, hey, he was moved with compassion toward them, this great multitude that was sick. And the Bible said that he healed their sick. Before they were healed, he was moved with compassion. Oh, my friends, we need to have a heart of compassion. We need to have a heart of love. We need to love the people we pray for. We just can't just pray in the motion, uh, in a routine, uh, just going with the flow because we know to pray, we just pray. If our heart doesn't go out for people who are sick, then nothing would happen. God wants us to love the people we pray for. Let me give you another example. Uh, my dear friends, I was working in this particular church and, 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 and the head deaconess told me that there was the senior woman who was sick. And that she had renal failure. And she was in the end stage of just a few days before dying. And whatever treatment she was receiving, it wasn't working. Uh, they invited me to her home. I went to her home this time in person to pray with this person. And uh, myself and the sister, we entered the home. And this woman, by the way, she was 71 years old. She was laying on her bed. She could barely move her hands. Terribly sick. Renal failure. Showed with different symptoms upon her body. Couldn't speak. But with a little energy that she had, I asked her, do you believe in Jesus? Do you believe that he could change your life? You know, I, 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 if, if, if I would have listened to other people, I would have said to myself, oh, I should pray that uh, she had lived her life and she's a senior person now. Maybe her time had come. I would have prayed that, Lord, let her rest in peace because she had reached the three score and ten. But you know something? My heart was touched with compassion for this old lady. My heart went out to her. I remember Matthew 14, 14. I remember how Jesus was moved with compassion. And I told her, I'm going to pray for you. I called in the name of Jesus and the power of his Holy Spirit to, to touch that sister and give her life, give her healing, restore to her her kidney function and heal every organ in her body. And sisters and brothers, would you believe 
the next Sabbath, uh, she came to church, walking to church. Hallelujah. The Lord touched her and healed her. Several years after I went back to that church, she was, she was, uh, she was about 76 years old at that time. That sister was still brisk and walking to church, coming, rejoicing in what the Lord had done for her. The power of the Lord reached out and touched her on that day. The next point I want to share, my friends, is that Jesus, most of Jesus' public prayer was on healing and deliverance from evil. And if you believe that Jesus' power is greater than the power of darkness, then you are on the right path. Be not dismayed. Be not taken over with fear. But the Lord says that he is with you and he will deliver you and he will use you to help others to be delivered. When Jesus went to the cities and to the villages, according to Matthew chapter 9, the Bible said he prayed, of, uh, he preached the gospel of the kingdom. He healed every sickness and every disease. And you know something? There were many people who were afflicted by evil spirits. There were people who were demon-possessed, and the Lord delivered them. There was a brother one day. He called me on the phone. He said, Pastor, can you come to my house? I have a problem. I said, Brother, I can't come to your house now. But I believe that if you need prayer, the Lord can hear even over the phone. And, 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 and whatever is the problem, I want you to believe that he can do it for you over the, over the phone as much as he can do it for you if I come in person. Well, he was one of my members in church. And 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 uh, he had strongly believed in the power of prayer over demonic forces. Uh, previously, he was of the Pentecostal faith, and now he is an Adventist. But but he believed in the power of Jesus to overcome uh, uh, spiritual attacks. And he told me uh, he believed his neighbors were against him, and they had done something evil against him because it had some issues with a property where he was living. He said, Pastor. It it, it 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 something came into my house. He said, uh, uh, my leg, one of my leg is swollen. I could actually see the swelling and it is pain in me and it is swollen. I said, okay, I understand. You know, just as Job was afflicted by the devil and boils came all over his body, even though his faith was being tested, it revealed to us that the enemy of our faith can dispatch his demonic forces to afflict people. Even when we think an illness is physical, it comes as a spiritual affliction. And that brother was in pain. I said, let's pray. We prayed in the name of Jesus, power in the name of Jesus. To dispel darkness, Jesus delivered so many from the money forces. After we prayed and I hung up, my dear friends, it was just a minute or two after the brother called me back. I remember his name vividly. His name is Franklin. He called me back and he said to me, he said, Pastor, you wouldn't believe this. But I said, tell me, what's the testimony? He said, after you pray in 10 seconds, the swelling of my leg went down and I feel delivered. I feel at peace. Jesus did something for me today. I said, give Jesus the praise. Whatever had affected your life, he has removed it. That brother up till today, that has been several years. He called me just uh, two weeks ago. And uh, even though I'm in New York, he called me and, uh, and, 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 and uh, he is rejoicing in what the Lord has done and continues to do in his life. In conclusion, my dear sisters and brothers, two more great lessons we ought to learn in the life of Jesus is that Jesus was concerned about his church. And this one ought to come home for all of us. What was Jesus concerned about his church and what did he pray for concerning his church? He prayed for unity. 
Jesus didn't like when we, when his church was divided and he doesn't like when we are divided. It grieves Jesus' heart. He, his, his, his prayer for the church was, Father, let them be one as we are one. And that the world will see when they see that we are one. The world will see that you have sent me. Listen, the greatest testimony of the world for the world to see that we belong to Jesus and Jesus belongs to us is when we are united as sisters and brothers in the faith. There is too much division in our churches, too much cliques or cliques, too much favoritism, too much fighting against each other. And, and, and unfortunately, some of the people who are involved in these things are the ones who pray for each other listen we got to break down the walls and the barriers if we want God to hear our prayer and I declare to you the more united we are is the more power the church will have that's why Jesus says that all men men will know that you are my disciples if you have love one for the other and finally before I close Jesus's last prayer was a prayer that was selfless, a prayer of forgiveness for the people. Hey, when we pray, one of the conditions for answered prayer, may I tell you, is to pray selflessly. There are some things we pray about Jesus doesn't grant it to us. Sometimes we pray for others, he don't grant it for others because our prayer sometimes is not selfless. But hey, when Jesus was praying at Gethsemane, he said, Father, not my will, but Thy will be done. That's a selfless prayer. When he was on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. That was a, a selfless prayer. When we begin to pray selflessly and we pray to forgive each other, we would see the power in our lives like never before. Hey, my friend, that brings us to the end of principles that we can learn from Jesus' prayer life. But I've got news for you. Before I leave, I want you to know that Jesus said to us that the things that he did, the works that he did through the power of prayer, according to John 14 and verse 12, you will be able to do even greater. Amen. 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 You will be able to do even greater. You think Jesus did amazing thing? Well, you just wait. You just wait until the power of his Holy Spirit. And when you just wait till the anointing is upon you, you would give testimonies. You would move with the power of Jesus. You would deliver souls and lives. You would bring healing to others. You would be a blessing to others. Every day, you're going to have a testimony to do or to say, and the powers of darkness will take flight from you because you're a child of the king, anointed with his glory and moved in his spirit. Yes, greater works you shall be able to do. God bless your hearts. Keep on praying. Keep on following your prayer life. But most of all, follow the prayer life of Jesus. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise Amen. the Lord. Amen. Jesus. Amen. What a word. Amen. 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 Yes. Believe in Amen. Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Receive it in Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Indeed. What a word indeed. There is power uh, in the name of Jesus. And if we follow his example in all things, uh, especially in prayer, we will have that power as well. It has been promised. It has been promised. Thank you. Thank you, my pastor, for blessing us uh, this morning with that reminder that God has called us. Uh, someone prayed earlier not to be timid in prayer, but to believe uh, confidently that he is able to pray with persistent to pray with compassion uh, for each other. We thank God for that word this morning. I'm going to ask uh, Elder, Elder Janet uh, Fletcher, if you can, are you in a position to pray with us? Pray our final prayer today. Pray for the man of God that as he continues to minister, that God will be with him and bless him and his family. Uh, but pray as well that we would unite in prayer across this platform that is across the country and across the world, that indeed we would be so united that we would experience each and every day uh, the power of the living Christ. Remember those as well who are in the path of the storm uh, in Florida. Some of you are here in Florida. We pray that you're safe and well, and you'll be safe and well. Elder uh, Fletcher, would you be able to pray for us this morning? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, your word came to us. The assurance that you are still a God 
who is in the business of answering your people. We thank you, oh God, for waking us up this morning. We thank you for the privilege we have of coming together like this, Lord. And we pray that, Lord Jesus, you will cleanse us from all sins and all unrighteousness and nothing will prevent our prayers from coming unto you this morning. You send your man's servant to with a word to us this morning, a word of assurance, a word to unite us, a word, Lord Jesus, that has moved upon our hearts and we realize that in it you are there, you are good, you are doing good for your people, Lord. And we just want to thank you for the way in which you have used him. Lord, I pray that you will bless Pastor and his family and may they continue to proclaim your word and to speak words of deliverance to your people, oh God. Oh, Father God, I pray that his ministry will be strengthened, oh Father God. And not only that, Lord, that, that souls will be born for your kingdom, oh Father. Father, we pray also for Pastor Sam at this time that this ministry will continue to grow from strength to strength. And many, Lord Jesus, will be released and delivered and find deeper love, Lord Jesus, and, their, and, and deeper blessings from you, Lord Jesus. Hearts will be turned, Lord Jesus. Oh, Father God, we realize that the devil is there and the storm is in the path of your people. We ask, mighty God, that you will preserve your people in spite of the storm. We know how powerful you are. And we ask, Lord Jesus, that you will keep them in the hollowed palm of your hand. Protect them and shelter them, Lord, that no harm or danger may come to your people, Lord Jesus. Oh, Father God, back, back the forces of evil, Lord God, so your people can come out triumphantly and know that their God is still protecting them. Oh, Father God, I also pray for those who are sick, that your Holy Spirit will move upon them this morning. As you say, Lord Jesus, healing is the children's bread, and may they be healed in your name, oh, Father God. We have this faith that there is no sorrow there is no sorrow on earth that heaven cannot heal there is no sickness that is too big for you cancer can be moved and so we ask holy spirit this morning that you will move upon your people and you will go to the places of illness and that you will remove it lord god in the name of Jesus. This morning, Lord God, I ask that you will unite us as a people. We come from the north, we come from the south, we come from the west. Oh, Father God, unite us, unite us in our churches, unite us in our, in, in our different homes, Lord God, so that your Holy Spirit can work through us and manifest through us in a more profound way, Lord, because only as we become united that the power will fall on us more and more, Lord. So, Father God, we ask that you will continue to provide what we lack. Give us love in our hearts and let the mind of Jesus be always in us, we pray. And Lord, whatever I fail of asking this morning, I pray that you'll grant unto us nevertheless. But Father, remember the children who are gone back to school or who are still going back. Oh, Father God, I pray that you'll just cover them under your blood, that you will be with them, that you will surround them, protect them, keep them from peer pressure, Lord. Send your Holy Spirit to just whisper in their ears, oh God. Oh, Father God, may this school year be a difference and may they grant them wisdom, knowledge and understanding that they may be able to, to do effectively work, Lord Jesus. Oh, Father God, be with every teacher, Give them a heart of compassion towards the children, Lord Jesus. Oh, Father God, I pray that you will just be with your people in a very special way. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. 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 There's power in prayer. Thank you. Thank you again, Pastor Kevin, for blessing us this morning. Uh, we're looking forward to having you back with us sometime soon. God bless you. Thank you for the word. Uh, blessing upon your ministry. Blessing upon your family. Saints of God. 
Have a wonderful day. Be safe and be well. Today is prayer and fasting. Uh, we will hang out together at the well at noon central time. If you have some time, just stop in. We have a conversation and prayer time at the well uh, for a few minutes at noon, and then we close the day together. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Be safe. Let us keep on praying uh, with and for each other. God bless you. Have a wonderful day today, saints of God.